Kiara Vanner, welcome till my court talent. I will speak from the experience gained within five years of implementation of the Democratic School National Program of Support for Educational Reforms in Ukraine, led by the European Bregelen Center. I am working as an educator and football coach, and I have licensee from UEFA. Within my work, I have visited all 25 regions of Ukraine, and I will analyze the situation from the monitoring and evaluation activities done within daily work and our additional programs, like the Play for Human Rights campaign and Female Empowerment football program. This topic will be a basis for a possible big webinar with questions and answers, but now I will do my best to make awareness in just 7 minutes. Let's start from the most popular kinds of sports. It should be noted that we still have traditionally men and women sports, and only for some sports people used to play in gender mixed teams. I could say from a community perspective. So, when you visit almost any settlement in Ukraine, you will find people on the outdoor places playing football, I mean soccer, or handball. Uh, street uh, workout zones, table tennis playgrounds, tracks for running. Sometimes people also have appropriate playgrounds to play basketball or streetball and volleyball. For the indoor sports, the most popular are gymnastics and swimming. Mixed gender opportunities, aerobics or dances, mostly for females, and boxing or martial arts, mostly for males. A very small number of kids visit hockey or tennis sections because those types of sports are very expensive for average Ukrainian families. And in the last five years, we have had a huge increase in interest in gender neutral sports like ultimate frisbee, corkball, floorball, cheerleading, and petang or bocce. Those sports our school educators use also to socialize kids. Because when your mixed group of boys and girls play something new for everybody, children have unusual interaction without focus on talent and skills developed in preschool age. Every player has a lot of situation of success. The sport vertical in Ukraine is more or less sustainable. So, people who used to play some sport as children could continue to use the same infrastructure to play in youth and adult age. Also, there are many additional accessible opportunities for any age to play your favorite sport on grassroots level, for every wallet or even for free. Ukrainian children play different sports in physical education lessons or so-called hobby groups after lessons in school. Take part in school leagues and so on. Also, they have the opportunity to choose among a variety of commercial sports sections including government or community owned. And the problem is that free attending could be possible only for the most talented. Also, there are about 100 settlements all over Ukraine covered by social free to attend sections supported by top sport clubs or business structures. Coaching by parents as volunteers is not common in Ukraine. This exists only for small and absolute trust-based groups only, mostly because of unclear explanation of responsibility for the health of children in our laws. More often, sport activities are part of projects or long-term programs of NGOs, when children or youth workers without sport qualification provide training on a very basic level. And using our experience of integration of internally displaced people through sport for the last eight years, when over two million of people fled from Crimea and Donbass in 2014, I could share with you several steps with the highest results on inclusion, attractiveness, and integration of refugees. So the first one uh, is a non-formal education of physical culture teachers and grassroots level coaches, including development of competences for teaching tolerance, intercultural awareness, anti-bullying, critical thinking, and human rights directly on sport playgrounds. Open community events like festivals or friendly tournaments with six to eight 
diverse sports locations and also additional locations organized in intercultural way. For example, cooking of traditional meals of Norway, Ukraine, any other country with diaspora in Norway. Art and craft handmade workshops, living library with people who want to tell about their life circumstances, etc. Better to avoid highlighting focus on refugee status. You could make this, for example, using the name Open Sport Festival instead of Refugee Welcome. Much more better to organize a set of events when all the refugees invited by you will take part together with local people and feel themselves as full members of the new community. The main goal of these activities is to create an environment for trying the different sports existing in the community and having a lot of situations of success, fun and joy. Short exercises or sport challenges for 5-7 minutes in each discipline will be enough to understand willingness to play the sport in future. Also, this is awesome networking opportunity to get to know each other with coaches who can share full info about their sport sections, schedules, training process, educational and socialization dimensions. Leadership programs for refugees who already organized their own initiatives after displacement and need support for creating a sustainable model of functionality, dealing with existing challenges involving new players and scaling their pilot efforts. This could be also international cooperation, including cooperation with other stakeholders, such as sport top clubs who are active in the social sphere. For example, courses for refugees who lead mass sport initiatives in Norway, Sweden and Denmark with a week-long internship in each country. Using the infrastructure and coaching tools, workshops for, of elite clubs where participants learn social sport experience and also organize events for local use, including Ukrainian refugees. It was a great honor for me to meet you virtually, and you are welcome to contact me for further cooperation. Please find my email and see in the photos the daily routine of the football coach. Goodbye.